My name's Dr. Adrian Cohen. I'm the founder of Headsafe IP, and our technology is called the Concussionometer. We're a med tech play, and we're here to save lives. This is a parent's worst nightmare. A child that's injured, and they don't know what's going on. They're told it's concussion, and they read the papers. It's relevant at the community level. It's relevant with our multi-million dollar sports players as well. The problem we've got is this thing, the necktop computer, the brain. It's complex, and interpreting its signs and symptoms is complex. The best test we've got is called the SCAT, and that's because it's SCAT. It's all over the place. Six tests rolled into one, takes an informed doctor over half an hour, and nobody believes the outcomes. It's broke. We need to fix it. When you look at this problem, it's starting to affect the entire world. We see these headlines every day. Concussion is sports number one headache, a billion dollar problem if you happen to be the NFL or the NHL, and the total cost is around $60 billion annually across the globe. As a sports doctor, I needed a better solution to concussion diagnosis, and so we set out to build one. The concussionometer is our solution, a patented, clinically validated headset that actually tells the doctor when a player needs to leave the field and when it's safe for them to return, and it takes two minutes. How does it work? It works like this. We shine a light into the eyes of the actual patient. The electrodes on the back send the EEG to a smartphone and hence to the cloud, so yep, we've got an app, we're IoT. We baseline the players every year, we see what's normal for them. After an impact, if this changes, we've got objective information to give to the doctor trying to make the decision. And as they rest and recuperate and come back to normal, that's exactly what we want. We need to know and not guess. So yeah, it's a big market and there are lots of competitors out there. There's the SCAT test, by the way. All of them take longer, all of them cost more per test, but most critically, all of those other technologies can be influenced by the sports person. In other words, it can be gamed. The results are not objective. We need a pretty good team to work on our team, and apart from my 30 years experience starting in the Westpac helicopter as a doctor in pre-hospital medicine, my co-founder, Greg Roger, who happened to be around with me at the time, went on to do engineering and has been a successful medtech entrepreneur with dozens of products at market across the world, patent and regulatory experience, and a couple of awards from some of our alumni here today to boot. Brett Slade is our technical guru. This is a medical device. We need to get it right. We need to work to ISO standards, and that's what we do. We've got a clinical advisory panel with more professors and more PhDs than there are people, and a business model that says this scales very quickly. 250 bucks, less than a pair of boots. $20 per person, that's for the device, $20 per person per year and an addressable market that heads over 10 million and over 200 million in recurring revenues very quickly. Just in sport, don't forget motor vehicle accidents and falls, and of course our good friends in the military who also suffer concussions. We're on our road to market. A seed round raise, we're doing the development work in our first clinical trials. We will have an ISO ready product to go through further trials and regulatory approval on three continents that we all know is so important. And towards the end of next year, we head to sales with guaranteed channels and early adopters who are already working with us in a research sense, and that turns them into our early market adopters, our marketing mavens, the people that take this product to market and shepherd it into these countries. The concussionometer is reliable, accurate, and objective, and we've got a big dream. The elimination of preventable brain injury through technology. Dare to dream with us. Thank you. Excellent. Very well done. One second to spare. All right. Over to our judges. Um, so I've seen a lot about this. Uh, have you got any um, in uh, sort of business in with the NFL or any of those kind of areas where this is a very public kind of problem at the moment? Have you? So we've just come back from uh, being in the US and the UK because here in Australia, nothing's spent on research in sport. So the NRL, our rugby league, who makes all the money, just announced a massive sum of $65,000 going into research this year. All right, that didn't pay for lunch, by the way, $65,000. On the other hand, the NFL, who we started our discussions with, have just announced $20 million per project over the next three to five years for applicable technology. So we've got a project there running through Mount Sinai University and another one that we hope to kick off with Stanford as well. It didn't mean kick off because they've both got footy teams. Funny sort of football, they throw the ball forward a lot. 
Can you go through your pricing model again? I was a bit confused. There was the four dollars and then the two fifty and the sure. just. So the hardware is designed to be almost giveaway. We're talking, we're talking um, inkjet printers, two hundred fifty dollars, yep. less than a pair of boots these days. Yeah. And the, that's for a team, or and is that's that for, a that's for the for the individual unit that's from the doctor who's our consumer or the sports trainer. Yeah. Ultimately, they're funded by the sport, the school, the um, the group or alumni that they're part of, and then fundamentally the health system and the insurer underneath all of that. Yeah. The subscription model is twenty dollars per player per year, so recurring revenue to do your baseline to test you as many times as you need during the season. In a high risk sport, you might be tested every week, or you might just be tested for cause. There's no reason because of the simplicity and the speed of this test where it simply can be done every week. Because we're not just worried about the big concussions where there's a knockout and somebody staggering all over the field. They're the obvious ones. We're worried about the gradual um, trauma that's built up over time, so-called sub-concussive impact. In other sports like soccer, where you don't necessarily have the big knockouts, but you do have damage being done, and soccer's very worried about that. But they have to take the approach that it's better to know and to be able to reassure your uh, player base then put their head in the sand like they've done for the last 30 years. So I can see, um, it, you know, you explain that you take sort of a baseline of a player and then you look at their, their um, status after an event, you can compare it against the baseline. What if you don't have a baseline? Can you also see um, that there has been a problem? Because so, it either returns or doesn't return to normal, or how does that sort of work? Absolutely. So we can do that longitudinally. So someone comes into a trauma center and it's the first time we see them, we can track longitudinally what's happened. The really exciting thing of this is in the big data. We are going to learn so much about the brains of normal people, of injured people. It'll inform other diagnostic dilemmas as well. And the more we've got, we can throw the analytics into our software program as well and start to give that result straight away. It's complicated, it's political, because no doctor wants a phone to take their place, let's be honest. Is they will help them. Is it applicable to other sports or junior sports? And can you charge parents, therefore, the subscription? Absolutely. So parents of uh, kids at private schools are probably one of the largest market when it comes to it. They're particularly interested and they're particularly worried. And they're not afraid. They don't have the same fears that the big sports have that, you know, we're going to destroy sport. They're interested in their kid playing. They just want to make it want it safe. So it does work across the spectrum. It doesn't matter what age you are. Your brain's the same. Your response to the stimulus we use is the same. And it comes back to normal when you're back to normal. And that's important because people think, oh, concussion, it's not a big deal. It'll be back to play in a couple of weeks. But in kids in particular, a second impact before your brain is healed can be fatal. So the question is, how do we know the first one was a concussion? We measure it. How do we know they're safe to go back? We measure it and tell them they're back to normal. Just quickly, what's your secret sauce to be cheaper than everybody else? You said like there's a whole bunch of people who do the same thing, maybe not as mobile, maybe not as cheap. What's and more importantly, not objective. So a test that uses something that can be changed or influenced by the athlete, where they're doing a cognitive task, like a visual test, we need you to read these numbers as quickly as you can. Well, guess what? They're now sandbagging that test. They're being taught to sandbag. The whisper goes around the locker room. The first time you do it, don't go as quickly as you can because you'll look better the next time. It's the equivalent in the old days of the whisper that used to go around, hey, you know when Doc holds up, he always holds up three fingers and the answer's always three. All of those are subjective and can be influenced by the athlete. You cannot even do that with your eyes closed with our test. So you can't game it, you can't influence, you can't bow to pressure. And it gives the doctors something on which to make a decision. So Great, thank you sued. very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.